Hi, my name is Aya, you're watching Aya Read, and I'm here to talk about my favorite books I read this fall. So I actually didn't have any favorite books I read in September. I had two favorites I read in October and I had four favorites that I read in November. So let's get started with my October favorites. The first one is Caught Up by Liz Tom Ford. I actually snagged the man cover. I couldn't find the man covers for Mile High and The Right Move, even though I really wanted them. In the Netherlands, I don't know, for some reason, especially like if there is a UK edition, the US indie covers are very hard to find. But this one, I thankfully, I just, I could find. So now I have both editions and I'm very glad about that. Caught Up is the third book in the Windy City series by Liz Sum Ford. And this one you follow Kai, who's a baseball player and a single dad, and you follow Miller. And Kai, basically, no nanny has been good enough for his son. He keeps hiring nannies and keeps firing them. They need a nanny to come with them to the game. So finally, his coach is sick of him. So he sticks his daughter on Kai. He's like, you know what? I want to spend time with my daughter. You need a nanny. She's going to be the nanny now. So since, since he really does love his coach, he agrees. But Miller is unlike any nanny he's ever had. She's very brash. She's very, um, she just says what she thinks all the time. And she dresses however she likes. And he is very attracted to her right away. Like they meet at an elevator. He still, he doesn't know that she's the nanny and already he's like very attracted to her. She goes with them on the road and they fall in love on the road, but her father actually warns him that she's very flaky, that she she cannot tie her down at one place. She wants to be free to roam the world and the way her job is structured, she stays at a place for a couple months and then she leaves again. And he obviously, he needs a very stable house for his child, even though he's also he also travels. Their base is still Chicago. So yeah, that's all, like, that is another thing they have to deal with. I really love this book. I'm really loving the Windy City series. I gave the first one four stars and the second book five stars and this one five stars as well. Even though I did really love it, I, is, the second book is still my favorite, but this one is a very close second. I really enjoyed it. I loved Kai. I thought he was such a good guy. I loved how he cares cared about her and I love how much he loves his son. And I thought Liz Tom Ford did a wonderful job with Max. Max was such a good, like she portrayed him very well. Sometimes kids and books aren't very, aren't done very well. I think she did a wonderful job with him and Miller was great as well. I just, I really loved it. And I loved getting all the cameos of especially Ryan and Indy. I, I just really love this series. The fourth book was very well set up in this one. So I'm very excited to read about that one. My other favorite was Hopeless by Elsie Silver. I actually read both of these in the same video. I read, I did a video reading my most anticipated new releases. So I'll leave that linked for you. This is the fifth and final book in the Chestnut Springs series. And you follow Bo and Bailey. And Bo, he used to be in the military. And then now he's out because in one of the other books, uh, he was actually missing in action. And then they found him, but he was severely injured and now he's out of the military. So he needs to figure out what he, what he, what he wants to do in life. And he is dealing with, it's not, I don't think it's ever really diagnosed, but it's obviously de he's dealing with PTSD and he has been drinking a lot as well. And Bailey is this bartender who we've seen in the other books. And I was very interested in her because she comes from this very bad family that everybody in town hates. And she, even though she's nothing like them, she constantly gets lumped in with them. And people treat her very horribly in the town, not the Eatons or their family, but everybody else. So one day when he's at her bar, they have this conversation where she's like, you know what, you even, it doesn't matter what you do. You, you are the town prince. Everybody's still gonna love you. But I get judged based on my family and not based on my, like who I am as a person. He thinks that that's not true. So he proposes that she becomes his fake fiance so that she's an almost eaten and they're gonna see if the town actually treats her differently. So they do that and that leads to them eventually becoming roommates, her helping him with his PTSD. And I really, really love this book. So far, I've loved every book in the Chestnut Springs series. My favorite is still the third one, Powerless. But this one I really love. This might actually be my second favorite. I just enjoyed it. One thing I didn't really love, which I see a lot of books do this, where a man is obviously dealing with mental health issues and then it's the woman that magically heals him. That's not a thing. 
I don't really love that. And also another thing I didn't really love about this book is that the way he was so flippant about therapy, the fact that he never really sought out therapy when, I mean, obviously he was struggling with some real things that should have been addressed in therapy. But other than that, I did really enjoy it. I love Bailey. I thought she was such an endearing character. I loved the, that, you know, that she was a virgin, but also knew a lot about sex and was talking a lot about sex. I mean, I kind of related to that. So yeah, I just, I just enjoyed this book and I loved, even though we didn't get a whole lot of them because he was kind of branching out and really wanted things for himself and not really, he didn't really want to be part of the family business, stuff like that. So you didn't get a whole lot of Harvey or the rest of the Edens, but the snippets we did get, I really, really enjoyed. So yeah, definitely a favorite of mine. The four I read in November, I actually read all of them in my Goodreads choice video. So I'll leave that link for you. That is a very long video, but it does have timestamps. So if you want to know my thoughts on a particular book, definitely check that video out. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time talking about these because I also did talk about them very recently in my wrap up, but yeah, these four I just really love. The first one is In the Likely Event by Rebecca Yaros. This is a military romance. Actually, this similar to this one. Basically, this is a story told in two timelines. The first one is the present in Afghanistan in 2021, around the time that the Taliban is taking over again. Past timeline is actually them meeting for the first time it basically spends seven years of them meeting for the first time, them seeing each other again, and then ultimately seeing them break apart. Basically they meet, the way they meet is actually very interesting because they meet at a, in a plane and she's very afraid of flying. This is the first time he's ever flown. And then the plane actually crashes and he kind of saves her. And then they actually meet at a random place as if like by fate, they spend years trying to make it work, but never really being able to. And now they meet each other in Afghanistan. He didn't know that she was going to be, that she was going to be there. And she thinks that he's been dead for three years. So they have to face, confront what happened in the past, confront their feelings. This is also kind of a bodyguard romance because he's assigned to her. She's a politician and he needs to protect her. I really love this book. I love them so much. This did truly feel like soulmates to me. Like Rebecca Yaros did a wonderful job explaining why these two fell in love, why they keep being drawn to each other. I just really loved it. And I find myself, I read this near the beginning of the month and I constantly find myself thinking about this book and, you know, kind of swooning over Nate. <laughs> I just really loved it. And I love that there was some other thing going on as well with Nate that you find out at the end. Yeah, I just, I love, this was so angst filled and so heartbreaking, but I did feel like the HGA was earned and it was very hard earned, but I do feel like these two are going to be together forever. And even though this was heartbreaking, I did really love reading it. And this just made me want to read, want to watch Lady Hawk because she's named after the main character in that movie. And the way they describe that movie, it is very similar to a charmed ep episode, which I'm sure is also based on Lady Hawk where one of them is a bird by day and the other one is a wolf by night. So they never, they only have like minutes a day to spend time together. And I really love that Charmed episodes is one of my favorites. So I really want to watch that movie now. Loved it very much. It's actually my favorite Rebecca Yaros that is not Fourth Wing. I actually also did a Rebecca Yaros vlog reading her books that aren't Fourth Wing. So I'll also leave that linked for you. Next is Final Offer by Lauren Asher. This is the third book in the Dreamland Billionaire series by her. And I really, really enjoyed this book. This is a single mom, second chance romance. Basically, Cal and Lana, they used to be together six years ago, but since he's an alcoholic and he just saw that he was hurting her all the time, he broke her heart and vowed to never come back to this small town, this lakeside town. But now his grandfather died and he left each of his three grandsons a task in his will. And if they complete the task, they will get their inheritance. So his task is to sell the lakeside house and spend one last summer there. But what he doesn't know is that this house is not only was not only willed to him, it was also willed to her. So they have to, uh, he has to convince her that she needs to sell the house, but he cannot tell her that it's part of the will. So obviously this forces them into a forced proximity situation. They have to confront their feelings. He gets very close to her daughter. And I really loved seeing that. And yeah, I, I really love how this was a second chance romance, but his issues that were part that broke them up in the first place were not really, were not resolved, which means they have to figure out what they're going to do about that. 
and now she not only has her own heart to think about, she also has to think about her daughters. And I really loved it. I have sometimes have issues with billionaire romances, but this one I thought was done wonderfully. I loved that it was not in the corporate setting. I loved that almost every scene we got with them was spent in this small town. And obviously it was obvious that he was rich, but I don't know, I just, the normal things I don't like about billionaire romances were not really present in this book. This was very long, which once again, I don't really love that normally, but I felt like this, this never felt too long to me. I felt like it was just right because both of them had tr issues, especially him, that he needed to address. It, like the chapters were short, so I just flew through this book and yeah, definitely a favorite. Love Theoretically by Ali Hazelwood. This is a, another STEM novel. You follow Elsie and Jack and Elsie is a theoretical physicist and Jack is an experimental physicist and those two sciences have like a beef with each other. She has this position that doesn't, she doesn't make a whole lot of money so she is a fake girlfriend on the side. Basically if a guy needs a date to a certain event he can hire her and one of those people is his brother and she has been his fake girlfriend for a while now. Little does she know that he's been pining for her, very jealous of his brother and now she actually is applying for a different job and who should be the person deciding, co-deciding whether she should get the job but him. And he thinks she's a liar, an actress, get the fuck out because he thinks that she's a librarian because a part of this arrangement is that she's never supposed to really say what her actual job is. So he thinks she's been lying to his brother the whole time. And he also notices about her that she is code switching. Basically when she's talking to somebody, she kind of realizes what kind of person they want her to be. And she kind of becomes that person. Yeah. He eventually talks to her about that and really is helping her become herself and they slowly fall in love. He realizes that she never really was with his brother. I really love this book. I love Jack especially. I just thought he was such a great character. I just fell in love with him so much. He was so great. The only thing I wanted more out of this book was more of Jack. I just wanted more of, this was told in single point of view, which is fine. I just wanted at least one or two more conversations, more focus on him as opposed to more focus on her. It felt like this book was Elsie's story and Jack was just living in it basically, which is fine, obviously. That, that is the whole appeal about romances. But I just want like a little bit more of a balance. I just want, I just wanted more of Jack. But I just say the things we did get of Jack, I just loved. And I just really, really love this book. And last but most certainly not least is Wildfire by Hannah Grace. This one, I, all of them actually read for the Goodreads Choice Awards. So I'll leave that linked for you because I had such a good time reading books for that video. This is basically a good boy, bad girl type of book. Both of them have daddy issues, yet they manifest in a completely different way. He, his father is a uh, gambling addict and because of that, he just learned that if he follows the rules, if he cleans up before his dad comes home, if he gets good grades, that, well, at least he hopes that his dad will not just yell at him. Whereas she, her father is very absent. He doesn't care about her. And she realizes that if she breaks rules or if she gets, then she'll get hit his attention. Like if she does bad things, she'll get his attention. So they actually meet at this hockey party. He's a hockey player. You never really see any hockey in this book though. And they have this wild night together. They actually have a one night stand, but she leaves before he comes back from the bathroom. And then they actually meet in summer camp. And in summer camp, there's this rule that the camp counselors are not supposed to fraternize. And since he's such a rule follower, he really wants to stick to that because he, he needs his job. He doesn't want to uh, get fired. And she, is turning a new leaf. This camp is the only place where she really felt at home, where she really felt like she had a family. So she wants to sort of follow the rules, but on the other hand, she kind of wants to break them for him. But since he doesn't want to, she's respecting that. So that even though they did have a one night stand, it slowly, it actually turns into a slow burn romance where they slowly get closer. They slowly become friends. They slowly get to know each other before something really happens. And I really loved it. I loved Russ. Russ was such a good guy. He was so sweet. He was such a good boy. I loved reading about him. Like every scene with him, I just swooned and melted over him. He was so good. And I also really loved Rory. I loved how she deeply cared, but I also loved how funny she was. I just found myself laughing out loud a lot while like reading about her antics. 
And I loved the kids in this book. I love the dogs in this book. I just really loved it. So yeah, I never read Icebreaker. And I do have to say, if you can, I would suggest reading Icebreaker first, because especially in the first part of this book, where uh, she never really introduces all the other hockey players and their girlfriends. So I was I was feeling very lost, even though this obviously does take place at camp and she does have to introduce those characters. But I would have loved, I think I would have loved that first part a little bit more had I known all these characters. But yeah, other than that, I just really loved it. And I'm very interested to read Icebreaker. I'm going to be reading that next month. And I'm very interested to see what I think of that book. Because obviously that book was very, very hyped last year. So yes, these were my six favorite books I read this fall. Um, so yeah, I, like I said, I had a rocky beginning this fall because September was not a good reading month at all, but I did end on a very, very high note. So I had a great fall reading month. Definitely let me know in the comments below if you read any of my favorites and what your thoughts were. And I would also really love to know some of your favorite books that you read this fall. And I really hope you enjoyed this video. Definitely let me know by leaving a like if you did. And thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll talk to you later. Bye.